Now, yesterday, obviously, we've had the ECB increasing their bond buying program, and that uh, boost was even uh, bigger than expected, and it's going to be uh, lasting up to 2021 as well, right? So we we'll have an extra 100 billion to play with now in the European uh, Union, which is, seems to suggest that we might see the euro uh, keep rising. But obviously, this also depends on how the dollar is performing. As we know, currently, the dollar is quite weak for a number of reasons, uh, but obviously would not really know how long this is going to last, right? And we've had a very big uh, drop on dollar as well. So we could expect at some point a pullback. Now, on the, um, since we are going to see the euro against the pound, um, on the Brexit side, there is still um, a lot of uncertainty between the, the UK and the EU uh, and the, uh, about the talks, pretty much. But now we have uh, the Northern Ireland coming back into the wires because they just simply say that there is not enough time for them to react if there is even an agreement between the UK and the EU, because January is just a few months down the line, and with the coronavirus crisis, of course, um, you know, causing, uh, disrupting the operations in general, then uh, they're calling for an extension of at least six months. So we're going to see how this is going to uh, pan out, but what I am actually seeing on the fundamentals and politicals tells me that the euro pound might have uh, a little bit more space to go to the upside before moving lower. So I will start with that, and then I'm going to go to the dollar against the, uh, the Chinese uh, yuan, and then uh, euro against the yen. Now, on pounds uh, and euro against the pound, we talked about this move. I mean, we've been looking at this actually for months, right? We're looking at this uh, as a primary wave one and primary wave two. I mean, it could even be an A and a B, um, we do not know, but at the end of the day, we can still expect uh, wave three or wave C to come uh, into play. Now, with this move to the downside, we call this an A uh, intermediate, we were looking to move at, um, towards wave B. If you recall, I was looking at the 38.2 Fibonacci, because usually when there, the pullback is short, we're going to move uh, down with bigger momentum. but since we broke above the 38.2, if I'm not mistaken, it was around the 0.89 or so. Uh, well, there is going to be a deeper correction now, and we can get to the one the 0.91, since we've already actually uh, had a, uh, the first attempt to break the 90 psychological resistance. Uh, probably going to get a second attempt uh, quite shortly. That's going to get us uh, to 91, and it also opens the uh, road ahead for the 9172, which is the 78.6 Fibonacci extension of wave W, right? And at the same time, it's a confluence level because if we take wave A, the bearish move down here, this is the pretty much the same level as the 61.8 Fibonacci extension is at 9184. So um, without seeing any bearish signals here, I'm expecting this uh, to be an impossible to the, to the upside. Uh, that is going to be wave uh, Y. However, the only concern I have with this uh, structure is that wave W is quite, I mean, it lasted, uh, let's just say, 30th of April, let's just say two months, right? So wave X down here, it might, um, we might see a move, something like an ABC over here, flat, that would become X, and then we would have a Y. That means that uh, I will only consider this a good, or, or not a good, let's just say, uh, I would um, add some um, elements onto the buying side once we break above the previous high of 90.54, okay? Now on dollar uh, against the Chinese yuan, we were looking at this um, as, an, as an ending triangle. Let me just go quickly on the four hours. Right, so we're looking at this one, two, three, four, and five. So with that said, it means that most likely we're gonna see prices move a little bit higher to take out wave three, then we're gonna have a four, a five, and that will be the end of this move to the upside, and then we should be looking for prices to move lower. Now we're talking about at least a few more weeks of um, you know, trading within this upside uh, range, let's say triangle. Okay, so now if we go a little bit lower, I see this again as a W, X, and Y combination, okay? Because it looks, there's a lot of corrections here, so the more complex it is, uh, well, it's the easiest to, for us to call it a complex 
move, right? So, so we had this move down here for X, and now I'm expecting, this is a triple zigzag, right? So I'm expecting W, X, Y, X, and then another move to the upside. Because we are moving with a, within a, an ABC move down here, I am seeing the 7088 support breaking to create a new low for wave C. That would be also wave X, and from there we can start looking for prices uh, to move higher to take out the uh, wave Y in the minor, uh, three in the intermediate, and that will also be the end of the triple zigzag, okay? So short term uh, decline and then medium term upside. And then last, uh, let's go on the Euro Yen. Since we're on the four hour, we can just quickly have a look at the uh, longer term. Uh, I mean, I've been looking at this uh, this correction lasted a while, right? So this is a, a one and a two. So in the intermediate degree, we're expecting wave three. Now with wave three, I mean, since we broke outside this huge trend line, right? It seems like this is a very valid breakout. And that suggests we're going to see prices moving higher. Now the next level above the 123.35, which was the 50 Fibonacci, and it broke right through it, we're looking at 126.70 in the medium term, right? But I am indeed expecting a correction over here because from the 117 uh, low up to the 124, that's a huge peep range. We haven't seen prices really pulling back at all. So I'm expecting this to be a false break in the first uh, place. And then moving down for wave four, maybe the 121 around the 120 area, perhaps as well a very good uh, psychological support as well, and then move higher again to around 126, 127. That would be, of course, minor wave one, right? So we still have a lot of space to move to the upside in the medium and long term, and that's why I would really pay attention uh, to, uh, you know, for lower lows, so I, we can create a very good opportunity risk reward ratio pretty much for the longer term. So this will be all for the day. Do not forget that we have the live NFP webinar, as I mentioned in the beginning. So I will see you there. Um, enjoy the uh, session until then.